Unless you've been living under a rock, by now you've probably already seen pictures of the new Nissan Z Proto, which is essentially a prototype of what we expect will be called the 400Z, which is set to launch around 2022. Now, in the event that you haven't seen it yet, we'll definitely talk a little about it and really just introduce the car, but I want to focus on some of the aftermarket renders that are starting to come out, which show what this car has as far as the potential ahead of it. Now, regardless of what it'll look like, it at least gives us an idea of what these things may eventually get turned into when they hit the street. This is another Velocity Crew quick look, and today we're going to dive into the Nissan Z Proto. If you like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you click the thumbs up button, and if you want to see more content from me, subscribing really helps. Thanks for all the support, and now, let's get to it. Last week, Nissan, after 12 years, finally unveiled the prototype for their next generation, Nissan Z. And according to them, this is a near final design and they took some time to walk us through some of the styling cues and inspiration this car had in coming together. Let's just get this out of the way now. The front end is um, a tad goofy. <laughs> and I'm no designer, so I'm not sure what drove this decision, but in my opinion, this is probably the main point of contention fans will have about this design overall. The second being the rear end, which I've seen a conflicted response to up until now. I personally like what they did, and it really paid tribute to the old 300ZX in a modern way, but the front end I, it just still hasn't completely grown on me, and you'll see later on that the aftermarket has a thing or two to say about that. And to continue this trend, the headlights are actually paying tribute to the covered headlamps of the old Datsun 240 and 280Zs. And once I realized this is the reason why they did the unique teardrop looking design, it actually made me appreciate it a lot more. Otherwise, I thought it seemed a little generic, but once you compare the two, it's kind of cool how they paid tribute in a modern way. Overall, I think the car has the general shape of a Z, especially at the A and the B pillars, which is a signature design cue. But one of my favorite new additions to this car is a metal trim piece which runs from the A pillar all the way back to the quarter panels along the roof line, and they call it the Katana. And I think that's pretty awesome because I just got done playing the game Ghost of Tsushima and I'm all about honor and samurais and katanas and stuff and you know, it'll like bring honor to Nissan and stuff and it's got like this badass warrior DNA infused into the core being and essence of the car and <clears throat> um, anyway, uh, that sounded cooler in my head than it did in execution, but uh, we'll keep it in the final cut. Subscribe to Velocity Crew for original content. <laughs> On to the interior. So since we're on the topic of gaming, the Z brand has leveled up big time in its new interior design. It's probably the largest styling leap taken by any Z generation in recent memory. I always thought the 300ZX had one of the most unique interiors due to all the 90s style controls along the steering column, and the 350Z and 370Z interiors were more or less nice, but they really took the function over form methodology with a little bit of a throwback. However, the new Z Proto's interior, it keeps that throwback with the iconic three physical gauges on a center dashboard, but all the other screens become modern and digital. The center console reminds me a little bit of how the 370Zs was set up with one large cup holder. And let's just take a minute to admire this glorious shift knob. That's right, it comes in a six-speed manual transmission and it just looks so perfectly wrapped in that leather. If that ain't honor, then I don't know what is. Oh yeah, and as far as the engine, they say it's gonna be a twin turbo V6 and it really doesn't take Sherlock Holmes to figure out that it's probably gonna be the VR30 DDTT from the Infiniti Q60. So it's probably going to make somewhere in the range of 400 horsepower. It's going to have turbos and it's going to be highly modifiable. They haven't confirmed any of this, but we pretty much suspect as much in the car community. 
Anyway, that's a light introduction to the 2023 Nissan Z prototype to get you up to speed. Now, let's talk about what I really wanted to get into in this video, and that is how did the world respond to this car? And let's take a look at some of the fan-made and aftermarket renders to show what these cars might actually look like once they start rolling around town. Because when Nissan revealed this, we only saw it in this bright yellow color and really didn't get to see or hear a lot more about the car. But before we get into the aftermarket renders of this car, let's take a look at what people thought it was gonna look like because well, as you're about to see, some of them were pretty interesting, and some of them even got kind of close. In Exhibit A, we have the Nissan Altima, or I mean the Altima Z, or mm, kind of has the front end of an Altima. It's kind of weird. This one has the front end of a Hyundai. It looks a lot like a first generation Genesis. This is a magazine render with a uh, triple center exit exhaust and a very tame looking front end. It's interesting, their take on the headlights. This one, it actually looks a lot like an Aston Martin V8 Vantage. They put the GTR 2017 wheels on it. This render from Motor One is actually pretty interesting. It's got like this weird overlapping LED situation going on with the headlights. And the rear end, it's a lot more hatchy. Uh, so, hmm, different take. Here's another magazine render. And, you know, I kind of wish the launch color was an orange. I know there's historical significance to the yellow paint scheme they chose, but this one is actually my favorite render altogether, just because it's got very clean lines. It's got those 370Z wheels. I like this one. And the last two here, it looks like they literally took the silhouette you saw in the beginning of this section of the video and they put some body lines to it. So, pretty close. Anyway, it's always fun to see the pre-release concepts people put together before we know what the car looks like. But now that we do know what it looks like, let's take a look at some of the aftermarket renders because this might give us a pretty good look into the future of what these cars will look like when people start modifying them. And I've saved some of my favorite and most weird looking ones towards the end, so keep watching along. First up, we've got a multicolor view of the Z outside of the typical yellow that we've seen it in. And next we have a couple different renders of what a Nismo 400Z would potentially look like. This one has a lot of GTR parts on it. And X Tommy Design went and cut the roof off. And Kinda looks like a Miata here. This one's actually pretty cool. It's pretty simple, just a little bit of a drop. It's got the two-tone effect going on with some TE37 looking wheels. This one's pretty cool. It's kind of like a modern versus retro look. And the bottom picture is actually someone's car. And this one from Art Tuners already has the riveted uh, wider fender flares and a slew of different wheel options. But I'm really digging that duckbill uh, rear spoiler lip. Now this render from Larry Chen's pretty cool. It's got the old Datsun style wing mirrors. It has the duckbill, the wider flares on the wheel arches, but the old school racing number, that big white circle on the door panel. That's so cool. John Seibel, I hope I'm saying that right, showing what his version of the Nismo 400Z would look like. And a little bigger, better resolution there. Pretty cool. And one of the biggest names in the Z world, Z1 Motorsports, putting their spin on what the Nismo 400Z might look like. And it actually has the cool GTR style hood inlets. And we've got not one, but two renders for Chris Forsberg's drift car. One from John Seibel and the other one from Hugo Silva Designs. Pretty cool. You've got shades of cars with a big arrow and just making the most use out of that big ol' air intake in the front bumper. In fact, if you've noticed, a lot of these renders, they haven't really touched the front bumper too much. It's kind of interesting. Car Lifestyle taking some cues from the 2020 Nismo GTR. They've actually made the front end a little sharper and they took that GTR wing. Focam Tokyo with a pretty minimalistic design. Again, big arrow and multi-spoke wheels with a little bit of a drop. This one looks pretty clean. And shout out to Cola Corolla with the Bozoku looking 400Z. 
And also shout out to FSpot for introducing me to what the heck Bozoku is. If you don't know what it is, go ahead and Google it. It's pretty interesting. But uh, that pretty much sums up the main aftermarket designs that I saw. So let's go into some of the weirder designs. And it wouldn't be a brand new car reveal if someone didn't go ahead and turn it into a wagon. Or I guess this is technically a shooting brake design. And X Tommy design, uh, they've got a couple other renders uh, earlier in the video. So pretty solid quality. I think this one looks pretty cool. However, definitely on the weird end of the spectrum. And next up we've got Newt TRZ with the 8-bit looking Super Nintendo Sprite pixelated Z Proto. And I, I just think it's a different take on it. It's just kind of weird, but kind of cool. And it looks like it's just a pixelated version of the launch car. But the one that takes the cake is Katassi 935Z literally made an Instagram account for this John Seibel Nismo Z with a 2020 Porsche 935 race car front end. And I I didn't know this car needed this modification. It's, I'm just kind of speechless on this one. Needless to say, pretty weird. And now my favorite renders. First up, we've got Yasi Design and good God, this thing looks epic from every angle. I mean, I've been following Yasi Design for quite a long time, and I know he's made some really awesome renders, but this one takes the cake for me. He did a uh, convertible version as well as a full-on Mad Max version. And hat tip to you, sir. What an awesome, awesome render. And next up, we've got Nipolitan, Nipolitan with the classic Calsonic livery on the car with some LM GT1 wheels. And I love the fact that it's hand-drawn, but it even gets better. If you go to the actual Instagram post, there's a video of it moving. So it's actually animated, so kudos. And then you've got Zatsuma, who made a pretty cool render that's identical to his own personal 240Z. And there's actually a couple really subtle tweaks that make this one really stand out. Zatsuma says, haters will say it's photoshopped. Spent too long a time staring at this, so I had to have a play. Tweak the nose, the tail, roof line, and center crease line, headlights, and a few extras. Sorry, not sorry. My friend, you do not have to apologize because this thing looks awesome. And now my favorite render of what the car could potentially look like when it launches is from JDM Z34. Really the main difference is it's a little lower, but the front bumper and what he was able to do with the grill, it just completely ties the whole car together. It gives it much more of a sinister look. Of course, the car's black as well right now, but the way the angles and the curves were added to that front grill instead of just having a literally just a rectangle, I think it sets the car off in a very complimentary way. So hopefully Nissan sees some of these, and in my opinion, I think the front end is the main area where the tweaks can be made, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Either way, it looks like we've got a lot of great options from not only uh, enthusiasts, but from the aftermarket tuners as well. So when this car hits the streets, it's gonna be a really unique vehicle. So, that's an introduction to the all new Nissan Z Proto, as well as some fan made and aftermarket tuner renders that were literally created hours after this thing launched. I personally am really looking forward to seeing the car come out. I think Nissan really is taking a step in the right direction with it. There may be a couple tweaks that they can make, but overall, I think it's gonna be really great for the brand. Speaking of really great for the brand, Hopefully you enjoyed this video, you either found it entertaining or maybe even learned something. So in order to help my channel grow, I'd really appreciate it if you'd give the video a thumbs up and if you wanna hear more from me, subscribing really helps. I look forward to talking to you guys again soon and thanks again for all the support. Peace.